Yo, you guys, this is Blacklist of the Abyss, and you're watching my review for Parasite, aka Kiseiju, episode 7. Okay. And, uh. <laughs> even when I think I've got everything all figured out, the author just keeps finding a way to keep things unpredictable. Alright. I, I, I just assumed last week that this was gonna end in a fight. Clearly, that was not the case. Uh, Uda ends up being not a person who would have their brain taken over by a parasite, but he ends up being like Shinichi, in the sense that he has a parasite attached to him, but his brain wasn't taken. Okay, in this case, it was his throat slash mouth slash ch chest area, okay? Um, and rather than fighting, the two of them actually kind of bond over each other's stories as to you know, how it is they became that way. Especially Uda, he's especially bonded because Shinichi told him about his mom and everything and how she had turned into, how, how she had been taken over by a parasite. Alright, so Uda especially. No, well, Uda is like, <laughs> he's, he's emotional. He's very, very emotional. Um, so there was no real surprise there that he ended up getting attached. But um, speaking of getting attached... Uh, Maki uh, failed to become attached to uh, Shinichi here. She was actually kind of just left out there. Uh, the, the two of them left, and she was just standing there. Like, what, what happened? Where'd he go? All right, but um, it's clear that Shinichi had not picked up on her feelings, and she didn't really get the answer she wanted. She tried at one point to get him to visit, and he originally said no, but then he ended up agreeing, all right, fine, like every once in a while. Um, so she's like the minor girl in the harem, because at this point it is a harem. There's her, there's Murano, there's the one girl from, who actually showed up last week in the episode questioning whether or not uh, Murano and Shinichi were dating, but she was the person who like, I don't know, like in episode two, I think, or something like that got annoyed when Shinichi didn't tell her that she was cute or something along those lines and she was like annoyed that he didn't like notice that that was what she wanted or something like that um, plus there's Kana who I'm pretty sure is gonna end up joining the harem at some point uh, though I guess it's possible that she won't um, but either way it's still a harem um, but she's gonna be like the minor one who has like zero chance of winning um, what's an example? Oh, no, who cares? I was going to try and give an example of a harem uh, with a female character who fits the same role where they're in the harem, but you know, you know that there's literally zero chance of them winning because that's how minor they are. Um, but it's not a big deal. If I had to give an example, I would have used Nisekoi. It's just that I don't know how many people have seen or read Nisekoi, but in this case, it would, she would be the Sugumi, where you, where you know Sugumi has literally zero chance chances of getting with Raku, mostly because she doesn't want to, uh, because she's too loyal to Chitoge, but that's, that's, whatever. Um, the point is that Maki is not going to get the happy ending to use <laughs> Mirai Niki, uh, phrasing. Um, but yes, well, speaking of endings, um, well, I, actually, no. no I, I was going to skip to the whole Nisei Nobuko showing up. Nisei means fake in uh, Japanese. So I'm, using, I'm calling her Nisei Nobuko now. Um, that was, I was going to get to that, but the, the, nah, I, I should probably talk about Migi first because Migi actually explains in this episode why Shinichi has changed. And it turns out that Migi can separate himself into multiple Migis. All right, and um, he can give them directives, okay, to have them go and accomplish a certain task, okay. And when he healed Shinichi's heart, some of his smaller fragments ended up getting swept away by his uh, blood and just scattered throughout his bloodstream, pretty much. And he can't communicate with them anymore. So now there are just little mini migis floating around throughout Shinichi's body. And that's why he was able to, you know, jump that high and run that fast and all that. Um, that's also why his speed is increased, as we see 
uh, later on in the episode. But um, there's there's technically the chance that those little mini Migis could have made it to his brain. Uh, but I honestly don't think that'll be relevant. Um, I think like I if if the author wanted to, he or she could have done something where like I don't, I just don't see the benefit of benefit the story in terms of like these unless the end game is having Migi take over Shinichi hundred percent, in which case it could be the start of a long process where Shinichi loses himself to Migi, but I don't really see that happening. I think it's possible, but I think the more I think the the explanation that has a bigger chance of being true is just that the author wanted to eliminate they he or she just wanted to make sure there were no inconsistencies or ideological things going on where it, it's something that needed to be addressed because if 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 they had just said that if Migi and Shinichi had just said that you know oh there are little mini parasite deeds floating around you then we as viewers would obviously be asking the question well what about his brain can they get to his brain like it, it's it's it would be an obvious question and to leave it unanswered would be stupid so I think this was just done for that purpose but there is a chance that maybe the end game here here at the end of the series is to have Shinichi be taken over 100% by Migi I just don't know what kind of ending that would be because like what I just don't understand like what the purpose of ending the story that way would be. Like, I mean, obviously, some stories are like that, like Death Note ended with Light being captured or killed. Uh, but like, so some stories end like that. But I, but in this particular story, where Shinichi isn't even an antihero or a villain or anything like that, I don't see what good it would do to end the story that way. But it, it is possible, so I figured I I would just mention it here. Um, but anyway, the point of all this is that Shinichi has changed physically. Um, and according to him, uh, Shinichi himself, he's also changed emotionally because there were times in the while he was in the hospital with his father that he wanted to cry and he could tell that he w normally would cry in that situation because of how strong he felt, uh, because he could feel how strong his emotions were. However, he still didn't cry. And that makes him think that he has become more parasite than he had he, his parasite side has overcome his human side, where he's more parasite than human now, which is why he ends up asking Maki uh, whether or not he looks like a human. And Maki ends up telling him, like, you know, whenever I see you, you always look sad, like, you always look like you want to, that you're crying on the inside. And her saying that kind of shows Shinichi that he's more human than he realized. Like, he hasn't completely lost himself. So he he still has feel he might not be as good at showing those feelings, but they are still there and people can still see that he feels that way. They can still understand that. Um, again, I don't know if it's I can't say if it I can't say that it's people who are close to him because Maki isn't close to him. She just met him like the day before. Okay, but she does have strong feelings for him. So maybe it's only people who have strong feelings. For Shinichi, are the ones who can sense this change. Well, no, because his, his well, did his father see it? Maybe. I mean, again, this is one of those things where they've only shown this with girls, so I don't know if this is like a gender thing, or if it's just like anybody who's that close to Shinichi and cares about him will be able to tell the change. Um, I mean, Shinichi's father. Despite what they showed earlier in the series, it's clearly shown that he is, like, he's not an idiot. Like, he can tell when things are up. Like, when he when he knew that, when he, he knew that the doctors were wrong about him being crazy, and, that he, and he knew he was right about what he saw with Nobuka. So, and he just, he just knew that he should not be saying that, and he didn't want to worry Shinichi. So, like, it's clear that the dude's not a moron. It's just a matter of, like, whether or not he was able to notice that change. Um, because then again, because when, when Nobuko earlier on in the series was noticing changes in Shinichi, it's not stated that Shinichi's father didn't, 
sense those changes. He just assumed why he was changing, and he just assumed that it was because, well, he's a boy, he's bound to change like this eventually. Like that's so. There's no. Why am I even talking about? Why am I even talking about this? I'm analyzing way too much. Um, yeah, I'm. Just, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the point is that Shinichi's changing <laughs> both physically and emotionally and mentally, okay? That, that, that's the point here, all right? Um, now, the giant chunk of the rest of the episode focuses on Nisei Nobuko, all right? And um, during this fight with her, it seems like Uda is taken out, but it ends up being revealed that's just a ploy by Parasite because they decided to name Parasite Parasite. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. For the sake of just not confusing that particular parasite with the rest of the parasites, I'm gonna call that parasite Saito. All right. I'm just gonna do it like that. All right. Because you know, parasito. Right, I'm just gonna call him Saito. All right. Um, so yeah, Saito f essentially fakes Uda's death. And this ends up being important because Nisei Nobuko obviously assumes that Udo was taken out and then focuses specifically on Shinichi because, yeah, she puts actually all of her attention was on Shinichi pretty much. And she was attacking him and trying to kill him. And this is when Shinichi was demonstrating some of that agility, some of his newfound physical abilities because she couldn't, hit, she got, she got him once, but that was only because Shinichi saw his mom's, um, uh, burns, and that made him remember that like this is I, he just he just couldn't do it he he just couldn't do it which you can't really blame him for he couldn't really do it when his mom was there with the, her actual face too he couldn't actually fight until her face like unraveled and became a you know parasite stuff right so parasite blades so you can't really blame him for not really being able to finish the job there. Um, but that's when Uda and Saito come in, and they finish her off. Um, apparently Saito, because of where it's located, can, it can actually, like, move around the internal organs in Uda's body in that area, including the heart. So that's, <laughs> that's incredibly helpful. Um, I don't see how any, well, never mind. I was going to say I don't see how any parasite can kill him now, but obviously you just cut off the head or, you know, do, do something else. Um, well, maybe not, because freaking, um, Migi can detach himself, right? Can detach as an arm, right? So maybe, maybe Saito can actually detach Uda's head and just, like, start hopping around. Like, yeah, that'd be crazy. That might actually be possible. Wow. Um, I, I actually want to see something like that happen now. That'd be really cool. Um, but anyway... Uh, this this fight with, with Nisei Nobuko was kind of anticlimactic for me. I it's it just, uh, I'm kind of in disbelief that Nisei Nobuko is actually dead. I mean, it probably is, but it's just kind of like I got this feeling of disbelief because it would ju it just seemed too easy, which I don't really know what I was expecting because all of the fights between parasites so far have been that way, just like one shot decided it all. Um, so I, I guess it, was, it was probably because of how powerful the episode was last week. I was kind of expecting this one to be, to have more of an emotional impact, kind of. So for it to just, like, it wasn't really much of a fight. Like, like I, I don't know. I, I, I guess my expectations were just too high. But it was kind of anticlimactic for me. Um, but after that, the episode ends with Shinichi returning home with his father. Uh, and when he goes to school the next day, he gets spotted by Kana first, and then Murano, all right? And we see that Shinichi has transformed into his self from the opening at the end, so uh, looks like we're in for something really good now. Actually, with the preview that we saw, it looked like we're getting some new characters for a new arc, so that's something to look forward to, definitely. I know, at least I'm, I personally am looking forward to it, but um, yeah. That's it for this episode review. Um, I'll give the episode a 6.5 out of 10. I thought it was okay. Uh, most of the stuff that happened in this episode was 
Uda related. Um, either it involved Uda or Maki. Um, they're the best things to come out of this episode were the reveal that Migi had with what happened with Shinichi, you know, separating and bloodstream and all that. Um, the stuff with Nisei Nobuko was resolved, but like I said, it was kind of anticlimactic, so it wasn't really, I wasn't really that big on that scene. Um, yeah, the ending was cool, but I mean, it was really just that and the, and the Migi stuff. That I cared about and thought was actually good. So I'll just give this episode a 6.5 out of 10. I thought it was okay. And that's that, you guys. Rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. You are right,